Hello everyone, the hearing is hereby called to order. We now proceed with the calling of the roll and the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Chair? Yes, Congress Member Eva. May I move that the reading and approval of the previous minutes be dispensed with? Likewise, uh, uh, I move to dispense uh, with the calling of the roll. It has been moved and seconded that we dispense with the calling of the roll as well as the reading of the meetings of the previous meeting. As a opening statement, I would like to welcome you to the fourth deliberation of Alan Poto of House Bill Number 252 entitled Act Instituting Genuine and very important in the country and creating the mechanism for its implementation and other purposes. Introduced by an Power Inspiring Representative Fernando Hickup, who is present today, by an owner Representative Ben Colmenares and Carlos Isagani Zarate, Gabriel Women's Party Representatives Luz Vininda Ilagan and Emmy De Jesus, Kapatan Party List Representative. Mark Terry Lidon and Act Teachers Party List Representative Antonio Pino, collectively named as the Papabayan Club. This afternoon, it is but fitting to reiterate that at the core of our people's historical struggle for social justice is the peasant clamor for equitable distribution of agricultural lands. After centuries of our brother and sister farmers fight for agrarian reform, Victory remains to be obscured. Let us all bear in mind that social justice and full development of the dignity of man is the rationale behind agrarian reform. The government's agrarian reform program has become the major social reform agenda of the government and a key strategy in achieving poverty reduction and equity in the countryside. However, during its implementation under a democratic setting, the program inevitably encountered some difficulties which hampered the realization of some targets. The objective of this committee is to determine measures that would be most applicable for the common good. The proposed measure seeks to address the Filipino peasants' demand for social justice and liberation from feudal bondage. It also seeks to correct centuries-old problem of landlessness in the country and break the monopoly and control of big land owners and foreign agro corporations to vast tracts of lands. <laughs> During the previous hearings, various positions were presented by the government sector, the farmers' groups, and other stakeholders. However, we have calendared the measure again for further discussion. As the status of House Bill uh, 252, we have uh, already discussed sections 1 to 4, and we are now discussing and deliberating on section 5, where this body discussed, among others, the following. Ito po yung napag-usapan ng mga nakaraang tatlong hearing. Number 1, that all lands operated as cattle and livestock farms are accepted from as decided by the Supreme Court in the case of Goose Farms versus Dam. Number two, all lands that have been reclassified as commercial, industrial, and residential lands are not included in the definition of agricultural lands as decided by the Supreme Court. Number three, inclusion of penal colonies. These lands are reserved and intended not only as, a, as prison or correctional facilities, but also for the reformation and rehabilitation programs. So the question is, if these lands will be included, programs for the inmates may not be realized. Number four, EO448 provides that land reservations of state colleges and universities suitable for agriculture and no longer used for necessary for the purposes for which they have been reserved shall be segregated from the reservation and transferred to the Department of Agrarian Reform for distribution to qualified beneficiaries under the Agrarian Reform Program. In practice, the DAR needs to needs the consent of concerned state universities and colleges before the land can be segregated for distribution. 
Okay, number five, uh, regarding timber and mineral lands, inclusion of these lands, this was a question the, um, expressed in the previous meeting, inclusion of these lands may suffer constitutional infirmity as they are not alienable under the Constitution. However, if these lands are being cultivated by farmers, then when we can opt to tap the DER in consultation with the DART to be in charge of reclassifying timber and mineral lands to agricultural lands if they are actually being cultivated and used by farmers. So Section 5 concerns the coverage of this proposed uh, House Bill 252. So ito po yung mga more or less na pagkasunduan o napag-usapan itong nakaraang hearings. So we will continue discussing about the coverage as well as the succeeding um, provisions. <coughs> Hopefully, today, this afternoon, we can finish with the coverage and then proceed to the free land distribution provision. Uh, we will cover the remaining set items under Section 5 relating to scope and move towards the discussion of Article 5 concerning free land distribution and if we still have time, Article 6 concerning modes of acquisition. Hopefully we will have a productive exchange of ideas this afternoon. Thank you very much. And before we proceed, uh, may I acknowledge the presence of uh, our vice chairpersons, uh, Congressman Manuel Villanueva of the uh, 3rd District of Tarla, Congresswoman Megan Antonina Nadres of the 4th District of Nueva Ecija. We have Honorable Antonio Lagdemeo of the 2nd District of Davao del Norte, Honorable Joseph uh, Stephen Pagmano of the Party List Abang Lincoln. Kasama rin po natin ngayon si ang um, isa sa mga principal authors, si uh, Honorable Fernando Hicap of Anak uh, Pawis Party List. And as our research persons, I will just go through this list that was given to me. Uh, representing the Department of Agrarian Reform, we have Director Nestor Floranda. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Under Secretary Tony Pagungao, who attends, visually attends this hearing is uh, sick, no? uh, but he, he designated the director Eugene Foliante of the, the legal division who will sit as an observer. Um, that was the text message sent to me as an observer no? because ang biyasa po dito sa usapin ay si Undersecretary Parungao. No? So makikinig lang po si Sir Eugene. May I acknowledge uh, also the presence of uh, Congressman Neri Carbinares of the Bayan Muna Party List, also one of the authors of this bill. From the DNR, we have Engineer Henry Passis, the Deputy Executive Director, Technical for CARP. So uh, we are now in the timber and uh, mineral land. So we have a lot of the position of the DNR to call po dito. Uh, yeah, of course, we have the, the first vice president of Land Bank, si Alex, Alex uh, Lorayas. We have attorney Robert Leiretania, deputy administrator of the Land uh, Administration Authority. Galing po sa Department of Justice, we have attorney Rosalinda Sao and attorney Maricel Pintuca, both state councils. Uh, they have been attending religiously our hearings. Uh, not just for this bill, but in other issues presented to this committee. So, Commission on Higher Education, uh, I think this may be the first time that uh, they are attending this because this also, the bill also concerns state universities and colleges. So, it would be good to hear from the chair representatives. We have Attorney Septon de la Cruz, Chief Legislative Mediation Division. Mediation with the legislative. Liaison representation. And Mr. Marco Cicero Domingo, Chief Enforcement Division. From the Department of National Defense, because it's a big one of the military reservations, we have Colonel, uh, well, we have first, by hand, second, 
Brigadier General Godfrey Julio, the Chief of the Real Estate Office of the AFP. Hello, sir. We have uh, Colonel Al Pereras, OIC of the Jago, or the Judge Advocate General AFP. <laughs> Colonel Chadoro Batilo, the, of the, also of the Real Estate Office of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. We have Attorney Emil Anton Coronel, Executive Assistant to the Undersecretary of Defense Policy, Captain Eugene Alion of the Real Estate Office of the AFP. And from the, from the Bureau of Corrections, uh, because we discussed the last hearing inclusion of penal colonies, we have Superintendent Venacio Tesoro. So those I mentioned were representatives of the various government agencies uh, who are stakeholders uh, in a grand reform or one way or another will be impacted upon with if this bill passes. Uh, sa hari naman po ng mga 